Hello and thank you for your interest in our study. My name is Seth Martin. I'm a Poland Cardiovascular Prevention Fellow with the Johns Hopkins Ciccaroni Center for the Prevention of Heart Disease. My work is also supported by the Marie Jose and Henry R. Kravis Endowed Fellowship. I'm the senior author of an upcoming Mayo Clinic Proceedings article entitled Statins and Cognition, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Short and Long-Term Cognitive Effects. We were inspired to conduct this study after seeing a number of patients present to our clinic with concerns for cognitive side effects of their statin medications after the FDA released a warning in February 2012. We set out to conduct the most rigorous and up-to-date analysis of this issue. Our study selection process is illustrated in Figure 1, our Prisma Flow diagram. 4,281 records were identified through database searching along with five through other sources. After screening out duplicates and irrelevant articles, we had 41 articles to assess for eligibility. The large box to the right shows reasons that articles were excluded, leaving 16 studies for qualitative synthesis and 11 studies for quantitative meta-analysis. The study was led by two senior Osler medical residents, Drs. Christopher Swagger and Raul Manilak. I'd like to turn it over to them now. Figure 2b, forest plot of quantitative synthesis for short-term cognition, is a representation of the analysis that we performed on the data provided from three identified studies. The data is mean and standard deviations of participants on the digit symbol substitution test, a test of executive functioning and short-term memory uh, that has been validated in numerous other studies. What we find here is that overall there is no negative effect of statins on short-term cognition. Figure 3b is titled Force Plot of Quantitative Synthesis for Long-Term Cognition and is an assessment of the incidence of dementia in statins versus the placebo group. The eight studies that passed our assessment of bias were included in this quantitative analysis and are listed in chronological order. The hazard ratios were calculated independently when possible from the data provided by each individual cohort. The weights were determined from the standard error. The total hazard ratio is 0.71 with a 95% confidence interval extending from 0.61 to 0.82. In summary, what we see here is an overall protective effect of statins for long-term cognition or dementia. I think that the importance of this study is that it provides reassurance for physicians and patients in the safety of statins from a neurocognitive perspective. While we can't rule out the rare circumstance in which a patient may have memory loss or difficulties with their cognitive function while taking statins, for the vast majority of patients it is a safe and reliable as well as a valuable option to manage their cardiovascular risk factors. Should a patient have issues with their short-term cognition, they should work with their physician to try to figure out whether or not statins truly were the cause or whether or not there may be other, other medications or other conditions that may be the culprit in their particular case. Objective outcome measures and clear taxonomy should be utilized as proposed by this review. For the prevention of dementia, we recognize the difficulty in conducting a large randomized trial, including the ethical constraints of withholding statin therapy as well as the long length of follow-up needed to conclusively demonstrate this hypothesis. We would also support investigation into and head-to-head -head comparisons between hydro and lipophilic statins for the prevention of dementia. In conclusion, our study found no detriments on short-term cognition and instead found a protective effect against dementia or long-term cognition. Given the enormous proof in the literature, on the protective effect of statin therapy on cardiovascular disease. We feel that patients and physicians can continue with comfort under the current practice guidelines. Doctors Swagger, Manilak, Blaha, Blumenthal, and myself would like to thank the Mayo Clinic proceedings. We'd like to thank you for viewing this video and we'd like to invite you to examine our article in detail including the formal assessments of bias of individual studies. We welcome any comments or questions at the email address listed at the bottom of the screen. Take care. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is 
www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.